Hey everybody, it's Dynamic Math here. Hope you're having a great day or great evening. I want you to take a look at this applet here. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to work with the applet you have on your screen as you're watching this video. And I encourage you to pause this video as many times as you need. If you need to catch up or hit rewind, you, you do what you need to do. Okay, but my heart's intent is for you to understand this concept uh, meaningfully in a way that makes sense because math is very dynamic. you got to see it and experience it firsthand in an active manner. And you're going to do that right here. So with this applet here, well, you see a circle, of course, and you see a pink angle right here with vertex D. And you'll notice that this vertex D always lies on the circle itself, right? Uh, you can mess around with the radius by just uh, hitting the brown point, but I'm going to keep the, so keep the circle so you can see it pretty well. And uh, notice these two blue points on the circle. These blue points um, are actually the endpoints of what we call the inscribed angle's intercepted arc. Yeah, I know, big word, intercepted. What the heck does that mean? Simple. All right, this inscribed angle with vertex D, inscribed angle has to have its vertex lying on the circle itself. But the two sides of the angle, that is the two rays that make it up, have to hit the circle at two distinct points. So this ray hits the circle right here. And this other ray, as I'm tracing along with my mouse, hits it right here. So you'll clearly see that, you know, this pink angle, no matter where I put it, will intercept that blue arc right down there. I also want you to check this out, too. You got a central angle here. Remember, uh, remember a central angle has a vertex that lies at the circle center. Always does. In fact, these two radii, or radius, plural of radius, right, draw here. This central angle and this inscribed angle intercept the same blue arc. Again, that blue arc intercepts, uh, is the intercepted arc for both the central angle that comes out here and here, and the inscribed angle here and here. No matter where I put point D, it's always going to be the case. So I want you to actually mess around with the applet you have on your screen. All right, um, Make the radius as big as small as you want and uh, move the blue points around. You can make a really big, big, big intercepted arc, kind of like this. And, or you can make a tinier one like this, doesn't matter. But let me ask you a question just before we start. See, the goal here is to figure out a relationship between the pink angle and, well, the blue angle right here, or the blue arc. Again, remember, this, uh, the arc measure here and the arc measure here are one and the same. If, if just let's pretend that this angle measures 120 degrees, the blue one. If the blue arc, if the blue central angle measures 120 degrees, then so does the intercepted arc there, right? So, now, does that pink angle there, does that, intercept, does that inscribed angle look bigger or smaller than the blue, ang the blue angle in the center? Does that pink angle look bigger or smaller? If you said smaller, you're absolutely correct. The question is, how much smaller is it? I mean, if I make this, if I make this intercepted arc really huge, right? Well, yeah, this pink angle is really big, but guess what? So is that huge central angle right there. So, I'll tell you what. Get the diagram to look just the way you want it. And what we're going to do is actually... Uh, once you get it just the way you want it, hit lock point D and begin. So let's lock it in there. And notice here, this uh, says drag me. So I'm going to drag that point. And I want you to pay close attention here. I'm not changing the size of the angle at all. Remember, we're actually doing a translation. A translation by vector does not change the size of the angle. It preserves that angle measure. And now you see the point that says spin me. So let's spin it until it can get spun no more. Perfect. Now we have another point that says spin me. We're going to take another inscribed angle here. Oh, again, spin it as far uh, as you can go. And then once you see the drag me point, drag it right to the center of the circle. And there you go. Key question now. How many, let's think about what we just did. How many of these inscribed angles, the pink inscribed angles, fit inside that blue central angle? How many? Well, yeah, common sense. You saw two, right? But let's hit the refresh button up in the right corner there. Let's just... Uh, I don't believe that always. Let's just put it to the test again. We'll bring it over here maybe, right? And make this a really, 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 really huge angle. There we go. So there's D and check it out. Let's lock it in one more time and let's drag this again. Inscribed angle is going to go inside the central angle once and we'll spin this next point here. Not once, but twice. So therefore, this inscribed angle right here measures how much of the blue angle? What fractional part of the blue does the pink take up? That's the key question. Again, listen carefully. What fractional part of the blue central angle does the pink angle take up? If you said half, you're absolutely correct. 
An inscribed angle will always measure half of its intercepted arc. Always. I guarantee you to play with this applet um, as much as you need, but you will always find two pink inscribed angles fitting inside that blue central angle. And that blue central angle has the same measure as the intercepted arc. Therefore, an inscribed angle measure will always, always measure half of the blue arc there that it intercepts. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.